So hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to Technically Creative, uh, our series of virtual conversations with Georgia Tech alum who have found their way to working in the creative fields. Uh, we started this series because we kept hearing from so many students who felt as though they had to give up their artistic side to come to a place like Georgia Tech, or at least keep it separate from their academic and professional work. Uh, but the reality is that a Georgia Tech education can lead to an array of creative careers, and there are many alum around the world who have done just that. So this afternoon, we're joined by Russ Todd, who graduated in 1990 with a degree in electrical engineering. Russ is now one of the managing partners of Acoustics, a global design firm dedicated to creating performance spaces worldwide that are wonderfully tuned instruments for listening. Among the many projects they've taken on is the new Goosh Center for the Performing Arts, which is at our neighbors down the road in Auburn, Alabama. And that's actually how he and I first met. But once we got to talking, I realized that Russ provides such a marvelous example of how a Georgia Tech education can lead to a truly fascinating career in creative fields. So Russ, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon for this conversation. Well, hi, Aaron. Hi, everybody. I'm really thrilled to be here. And and to, to virtually be, to be back on the Georgia Tech campus. This is great. I, I do wish we could be having this uh, here on the stage right now, but uh, that's, that's for a future date. <laughs> so, exactly. Uh, so Russ, I, I wonder, if, just to start off, can you just tell us a little bit about, you know, what, what brought you to Georgia Tech in the first place? And when you came to Georgia Tech, what did you imagine for your career at the time? I had no idea at the time, actually. <laughs> um, no, to, to back up a little bit, uh, I think you'll find that the, uh, the the field that I'm in basically started at a very early age. Uh, I was probably uh, six or seven years old and uh, started playing guitar. Uh, I saw the Bruce Springsteen album cover, Born to Run, and saw the first... Uh, a Telecaster guitar that, that it's an iconic image and um, so as I was playing I, I, I asked for a guitar for my birthday uh, saved up some money I got the guitar but I I didn't get an amplifier <laughs> so an electric guitar without an amplifier is not much use uh, so what did I do well I, I I hacked into my parents sound system and used that to play the uh, the electric guitar and I think I blew up a few speakers <laughs> at, at the same time. Well, that's exactly uh, the, the metaphor or the, 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 the initial uh, burst into uh, the field of acoustics, which I'm in now. Wow. Wow. So when you, uh, wh why did you end up looking at, at Georgia Tech as the place to, uh, yeah. were, you, were you just wanting to blow more things up or what was your goal? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I, need to, I, I wanted to learn how to, to, to make them work properly. Uh, actually, I was uh, always uh, uh, a little bit further on um, in age. Uh, I proceeded to play in a jazz band. Uh, we had a wonderful high school jazz band program. Fascinated with music. Also, uh, extremely interested in theater at the time. Um, we, uh, I, I grew up uh, in Alabama. We had the Shakespeare uh, Theater Festival down in Montgomery. It would attend plays and uh, became very interested in Shakespeare and literature. Uh, at the same time, uh, playing uh, in New Orleans, uh, playing in the jazz band, swing band. And I, I think that interest uh, combined with an interest in science and physics and technology uh, led me to tech. I was, I was uh, looking to, to go into an engineering field. And I felt like the electrical, the field of electrical engineering uh, suited my interest per my earlier comment. Uh, I, I had no idea, though, that I would actually end up uh, at the time uh, making my living in the field of acoustics uh, and audio. Uh, but once I got to Georgia Tech, things started uh, panning out in that direction. So. So that's, uh, at least we actually got a question from a student uh, when we first announced this, and, and they were wanting to know, um, you know, in your head, how, how did you separate your passions and hobbies from what you saw as your professional trajectory? Or another way to phrase it from what you said is, you know, what was that aha moment that you saw 
these actually okay. could come together. Well, it, it actually started with Dr. Leach's uh, a very uh, loved, beloved professor in the electrical engineering department uh, who taught audio engineering. And while I was taking uh, uh, digital design, circuit design, uh, Dr. Leach uh, taught a, a great program on how to design amplifiers, how to design loudspeakers that wouldn't blow up. <laughs> and I, I think it was more of an interest, um, and which then led to the time when we, we graduated. I was, I was really thinking about going into uh, uh, to circuit design, uh, microelectronic design at the time, and it wasn't so micro then, but uh, um, there was a firm, Panasonic, which you probably know very well, that came onto campus and said, uh, if you're interested, we have a, a company uh, in, in a, 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 a factory in, in Tennessee where we're designing loudspeakers for, for automotive companies. So for Honda and Toyota. And so all the studies with Dr. Leach, all the interest in, in audio really combined. And that was my first job right out of school. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so, um, so tell us a little bit more about the trajectory. So you, you go uh, to Panasonic and start working on speakers for cars, which are a little smaller than concert halls. So uh... <laughs> Exactly, yeah. And so I, I began to apply uh, a lot of the, the knowledge that I gained uh, at Georgia Tech in engineering and design. And actually my, my career to where I am now followed many different aspects of acoustics. And for those that, uh, that don't specifically know, I'm an acoustical consultant. And our area of, of focus and expertise is on performing arts. Uh, but the area of acoustics um, and acoustical consulting covers many different uh, industries. So um, I got married. We moved to, to Texas. Well, what do you do in Texas? Uh, oil, oil and gas, and, and heavy industry. And so while I was there, uh, I, I worked uh, with, with hearing protection for refineries. Uh, went off on several offshore oil rigs and did noise and vibration control. Um, and then that led to working uh, with, a, with a firm in Dallas that was uh, primarily in sports design, so designed several stadiums around the country with respect to acoustics, as well as theme parks. So the uh, Universal Studios provided the acoustic design uh, there in Orlando, as well as Disney. Um, and then... At the same time, I've, I always had this interest in music, uh, jazz. I mentioned jazz, but also classical. When I was at Georgia Tech, I would go over to the Woodruff Arts Center and experience the wonderful Atlanta Symphony. Uh, and when I would listen in a concert, I wasn't just listening to the music, but I always sat there and thought, well, how is the sound bouncing around this room and how am I hearing it? And I, I had that very curiosity uh, while I was at Tech. Uh, and there was a new performing arts center being built in Fort Worth, Texas, which was uh, right right adjacent to where I was working. Uh, I went over, and they needed some assistance to do some uh, acoustic testing uh, before the facility opened. And I assisted with that, and I met a team out of Connecticut that was designing that facility. Uh, and that was 25 years ago. And uh, long story short, I joined that that group, and since... Uh, with one of the partners formed Acoustics, our group, in 2001, and have been designing performing art spaces uh, ever since. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long, a lot in a short, short moment there. Yeah. Well, but I mean, I, I, think it's, I think it's representative of it's not, it's not a straight line for so many of these right. careers. It, you, you follow opportunities, but then also follow passions, it sounds like, as well. It, it, exactly. And I think that's it. And, and, and getting that strong engineering uh, uh, degree and, and, and knowledge base and how to solve problems uh, while at Georgia Tech, combining that with my interest. And so you, you said, how do you separate the two? I don't see it that way. I see it that, you, you know, in, in every field uh, that we have, engineering makes things better. And that's the same in uh, in, in our arts and our arts industry and performance industry, and that uh, in order to to put on a concert, there's a lot of engineering that goes in into that. Whether it's a you know a touring uh, t 
type concert, if there's a, a, a film or a production, a lot of engineering goes into that. And there are so many different uh, areas and fields uh, in the arts and entertainment world that if you have that fundamental engineering degree and you have another passion in the arts and culture, you can combine the two uh, and you'll find your fit. Absolutely. Wow. So I guess that, that leads naturally into, you know, can you say a little bit more about, you know, what is it to be a, a consultant, you know, who, who is going into all of these different um, places and, you know, is being both a, a partner and a source of knowledge for the creation of these performance and rehearsal spaces. So can you say, talk a little bit about what that, you know, what that mindset and that experience is like as a consultant? Sure. Well, when, when we start, it's, it's, it's interesting when we, when we start a project, uh, a great example is a, a concert hall we, we built in, in Nashville uh, for the Nashville Symphony. And in that case, one of the first things that we did is we took a group of people, the, the, the client base, uh, the architect, the team, and we visited uh, several halls around the world. We flew to, to the Music Verein, the Concertgebouw, and we all experienced those spaces we formed a vocabulary of how to describe those spaces so that we could have this language because we knew had, we had this big project that we wanted to put together. Um, and we had a shared experience. And I think the key point of that is that we needed to understand what the client was really interested in creating. And in that particular case, uh, we visited some of the great, uh, uh, what we would call shoebox concert halls, Vienna and Concertgebouw, uh, but we also visited the Berlin Philharmonic, which is not. It's what we call a vineyard or a surround uh, concert hall. And it was important to see both so that we could hear from the client why they, in this particular case, were interested in the, the, the shoebox form of the concert hall. So it, 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 it and, and, and I would say the, the, uh, the ability to communicate. I actually have a certificate in, uh, in, in English from Georgia Tech. So I think as an engineer, you have to, you have to not only you know, know your, know your, uh, your stuff within, in terms of the, 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 the math and the, the physics and so forth, but you have to be able to communicate. And uh, particularly as a consultant, uh, communication is very important as well. Yeah, you actually, uh, that's, that's exactly, because actually a question we had from a student here at Tech was exactly that, the balance of the technical versus the social in your career. And having you know, hung out with you just a little bit, I know you're a very friendly, <laughs> friendly guy, but I, I guess, you know, what is your, uh, your insight for students who are thinking about right. that balance? Well, I think it's important to, to, and I learned this from my grandfather, actually, is that you can learn something from everybody. Right. And so as an acoustical consultant, we work with architects, we work with engineers, uh, we spend a lot of time uh, in music venues, listening to music, talking to performers. Um, and the social aspect of that enables for a freedom of dialogue. And as you have that dialogue, you get little nuggets of information that actually help uh, help the design. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, I, I do spend a lot of time uh, in various venues uh, enjoying uh, enjoying performance. Absolutely. <laughs> What's um, I know you've had a lot of projects, so I'm not trying to ask you to choose your your favorite child, but I guess I, I'm curious about <laughs> uh, you know a project that you know you really felt you got to bring your your artistic and engineering mind together with your partners and with the partners on the ground that, you know, you felt was really, you know, a moment of inspiration or um, real creativity that came to bear on a project? Yeah, well, I, well it's interesting. Um, I, I think that when we're, when we're thinking about both new buildings and uh, the restoration of buildings, there's another term we call adaptive reuse. And, and that's where we take a building that may be used for one form, and then we convert that into something else. And I, a really good example that just popped into my mind of that uh, is a hall that we created at Belmont University uh, in Nashville, Tennessee. And it was actually 
a historic uh, church, typical uh, Southern uh, uh, church with a, a, high, a high ceiling. And the university was interested in creating a music space. And we walked into the church and kind of looked around, and we noticed that the, the ceiling height of the, the space was a little bit low, so we didn't have the necessary acoustic volume. When, we, when we're thinking about the acoustics of a, of a concert hall or any music space, one of the most important aspects is reverberation, and reverberation is directly proportional to the acoustic volume of the space. Um, but the geometry of the building or, or the room in plan felt very familiar. And going back actually to the, the tour that I, that I mentioned, there's this fantastic concert hall in Zurich, Switzerland, the, the Tone Hall, and it, it, this room felt like that. Well, we got back to the office, and we did an overlay, and sure enough, in plan, the geometry, both length, width, the relationship of the balcony, was nearly identical to one of the world's greatest concert halls. However, the ceiling wasn't right. We didn't have the acoustic volume. So what did we do? We blew the ceiling out, <laughs> you know, blowing up speakers. <laughs> we dynamited the floor, again, to increase the acoustic volume, and we created a, a, a really fantastic, uh, I think, um, uh, music space uh, out, of a, out of an old church building. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's incredible. Um Kind of the flip side, a question we actually got from a, a faculty member was, you know, your um, your thoughts on when you do go into local communities, um, you know, making sure that your projects are reflective or responsive to, you know, the needs and values of uh, of the the community as you're you're working with them. I'm just kind of, you know, curious from you know how y'all think about that and how you work with the local spaces. Well, we we recently completed a project. Uh, in Memphis, Tennessee, and this is actually another adaptive reuse example. Uh, there was an old Sears warehouse building uh, that was used. It wasn't a warehouse; actually, it was the distribution center. Not unlike the FedEx of its time. For those, there may be some on this call that like Sears. What's that? Well, Sears is, is the FedEx of the time, or Amazon actually of the time, and the. Uh, the building had sat, uh, it's a million square feet, and it had sat dilapidated uh, for 20, 30 years. Uh, however, the community uh, was really desperate or in need of, of uh, kind of a, a reinvigoration. And, and, and I met uh, a, a gentleman by the name of Todd Richardson, Richardson a fantastic person. He's actually an a art history professor who saw the importance of uh, art and and the creative arts in inspiring uh, a community to develop. And instead of the, a developer-based project, this project was actually from the ground up where the community began to go in and use the building in a million different creative ways to, um, to, to begin the process uh, of developing into what is now a sustainable community. There's, uh, there's businesses, there's uh, um, uh, sustainable restaurants in the space, and where we came in is we designed a sustainable theater for that community. So now uh, there's a, a jazz program, there's a drama program that supports this entire uh, community built from the ground up. Wow. Um, somehow we only have a couple minutes left, and I want to, you know, return to the most important question, which is, you know, what's your advice for some of our Georgia Tech students now, especially the the incoming first year class, um, who are thinking about this this question of, you know, how do I go into a creative field, even if, uh, you know, I'm also going to be majoring in, in engineering or another field that I don't, you know, see that immediate connection. Well, I think, you know, it's interesting because. My, if we, my partners, for example, I'm an electrical engineer, uh, jazz musician. Uh, one of my other partners is a mechanical engineer. He's also an orchestral conductor. My other partner is architect by, by training, uh, but he's also, uh, uh, he's, he sings. And so, uh, and 
and then my my fourth partner um, is uh, basically uh, from a theater background. Uh, and he does our audio design specifically. Uh, so what I would say is that at Georgia Tech, it doesn't matter which discipline you might be in in engineering or architecture or, uh, as well. Uh, you can combine that with whatever interest you have in the arts. And I think if you begin to look at the different fields that are out there and, um, you know, a great resource in our world uh, for acoustics is the National Council of Acoustical Consultants, uh, the NCAC website uh, you can go to that lists all the different areas of acoustics in particular that, uh, that, that, that you might be able to apply your, your knowledge and skills. But at the same time, there's the Audio Engineering Society. Uh, so you have folks that work in, as I mentioned, the production of live sound, uh, the design and engineering of touring uh, 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 concerts. Uh, of course, then you have recorded sound, a lot of work in Nashville, for example, uh, L.A. and New York. Uh, and, and, and I'm kind of focused on music here, but the same applies to, to all the other arts, whether it's dance, uh, theater. Uh, I, going back to the, the Shakespeare uh, example in Montgomery, uh, we recent com recently completed uh, in Brooklyn, New York, Theater for New Audience which is one of the premier Shakespeare uh, theater companies uh, uh, in our country, and uh, right, right there in Brooklyn. Designed that, worked with Julie Taymor for the opening with the Midsummer Night's Dream. Uh, so I think uh, follow your passion would be my, my recommendation. <laughs> I mean, I think that's the, you know, that's the theme of all these conversations is there are, you know, as, as we discover, there are all these Georgia Tech folks who have followed their passion and are um, undertaking incredible experiences and events. And we're excited to the chance to, to pull them all together under a, a, a larger umbrella. Well, can I turn the table for a second? What are some <laughs> of the opportunities for uh, <laughs> at the first center? Oh, wow. You're, you're so good. <laughs> you're so good at this. <laughs> I, mean, I think that's, um, you know, we have a, a large number of, of artists, um, especially this year, who are uh, doing residencies and workshops to do exactly, you know, what you were talking about, showing how uh, Georgia Tech students and, and faculty have have expertise and, and information that can help the, the artists think about new projects. Um, we also have a lot of workshops and opportunities for students to work with artists to imagine how to take all of their skills and to reimagine a new and better future. Um, we have a number of projects that are you know, really inviting students to throw out all the assumptions they have about the world and to reimagine what a new future looks like. Uh, and this is what artists do. This is what they help us to reconceptualize what the world could be and should be. Well, that's a, that's a great point because at this time, that's exactly what our industry is doing. Uh, with the, the current uh, uh, the COVID situation, where we're thinking and imagining how we'll experience arts. And, and as, as, a, as a designer, as an acoustician, uh, I go back to that comment about taking the tour. It's spending time with the artists. The artists are the ones that have the vision. And then as the technical or engineer uh, we, we need to be able to communicate with them, understand that vision, and then translate that using our skills and knowledge and engineering to make it possible. And now is a, 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 one of the greatest and most exciting times, in my opinion, uh, because of the challenges that we face right now. Yeah. I, you know, we're, and we're on the same page because I think the, the artists need the expertise that people from Georgia have to, to create this, this new world in, in so many ways. Exactly. I can't wait to see what uh, what all the tech grads come up with. <laughs> I, you and me both. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be a, it's going to be a fun year and a fun couple of years uh, that we have here for our future. Um, Russ, I just I want to thank you so much for your your time and you know just some of your experiences with us. Um, you know I hope we get to have more of these conversations, uh, ideally in person. And you know we can walk down to the the varsity or wherever to uh, to really talk about this. <laughs> um, Got to walk a dog, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, and I, and I want to thank everybody who's online who, uh, who joined us. Uh, and I am just going to give a, a quick pitch. You know, our next uh, technically creative conversation is going to be on July 13th with Meg Fletcher, who was the class of 2017. Uh, Megan's an artist and a studio owner here in Atlanta, and her painting journey began when she was a student right here at Georgia Tech. Uh, and then I also want to invite folks, you know, if you are an alum or, or know of an alum in a creative field who we should connect with, uh, please, you know, reach out to us and, and let us know. We, we know there are a lot of folks out there, and, you know, I can't bump into all of them at cocktail parties like I did with Russ, so we're excited to, uh, to find them. Um, and I do want to remind folks to join us this Thursday at 3.30 p.m. for Belonging in Community, which is a special town hall conversation with choreographer Bill T. Jones, Georgia Tech president Angel Cabrera, tech student Michaela Sinclair, and hosted by WABE's own Lois Reitzes. And you can find that information on our Facebook page as well. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, Russ. Have a good afternoon. Bye, everybody. Thank you.